Mr. Rosati, yesterday Polish Ministry of Defense unveiled new technical modernization program and announced that Poland will bu will buy not only F-35 but also more F-16 aircraft. So, why is the reason Leonardo is still offering Eurofighter for Poland? What is your point of view for on this situation? F-35 was designed to penetrate in the, into the enemy territory. The Eurofighter was designed mainly to protect our territory for any penetration of the opposer. And we do believe that this level of differences cannot really go into a compromise. So it goes without saying. Because Poland represents the political agenda of Europe and, and because we believe the Eurofighter has served and already demonstrated so well the protection of European skies. And in the years to come, this will be even more important than before. We definitely believe that Poland should attentively look to the Eurofighter option, which doesn't exclude the F-35, as much as we do believe the F-35 should not exclude the Eurofighter. We have a couple of examples. Italy, which is using Eurofighter and F-35. United Kingdom, which is using Eurofighter and F-35. But even United States, they're using F-22, F-35. And recently, they bought the F-15X, which again, in my opinion, is a further confirmation that the air superiority, su air superiority role has to go without compromise. So again, there is always a specific role that can make the difference. The Omni role or the, the swing role or the multi-mission aircraft, it's, yes, in some circumstances, it's, it's a good compromise. But in my opinion, this should not really be seen in, in this country. In this country, we should really see a very strong projections and very specific capabilities where Poland can really be the, the A-class uh, responder in air defense and the A-class responder in, in sad and dead mission means counter-react to any aggression and destroy the threats by penetrating the uh, enemy territory. Could you describe for our viewers what is your offer for Poland? What are the advantages over other competitors? Right. Well, we have to go a little bit back in history. Um, different from, 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 from other countries where they have big budgets and big numbers, uh, what was the moment to decide whether we would have go, and I'm talking about Italy in the specific, uh, uh, as a specific reference, but I think it's the same for Germany, United Kingdom, and other European members. Whether we would go and buy off the shelf or design on our own, that was a big debate. Um, I want to tell you a story. After World War II, and I'm talking about the 50s, um, any air aerospace, aeronautic capability was cancelled and we had to start again. And at that time, Italy was uh, using the F-104, which we bought from the United States as off-the-shelf platform. And then after that, the, the next step could have been for us to buy again off-the-shelf. But we decided to invest into the development of that time tornado. And we came together with the United Kingdom, Germany and Italy, and we developed the tornado. Yes, it was a very expensive investment. But because we did the tornado, that enabled us to acquire this capability, such a capability that actually brought us into another step forward. There was a moment that was a common requirement for Brazil, together with Italy, to have a, a light combat aircraft. And we decided to develop, together with them, AMX. When we met the Brazilian company, it was a very small company. It was doing a single engine piston aircraft. The name of that company was Amber. I think that everyone knows who is Amber today. And then again, because of that experience, we swapped into the Eurofighter and there was a newcomer, Spain. And Spain, again, the capability of Spain was not so sophisticated as was in Germany and UK and Italy at that time. But because they jump into the Eurofighter today, Spain definitely is one of those nations which is given the biggest contribution in the European aerospace and defense industry. So again, by sharing, by developing together, by putting together the requirements, this gives us an extra value, which was about on one side, 
creating our own response to the needs of the threat. So meaning we were designing our own fighters on our own criteria, enlarge our industrial capability, enlarge our know-how, extensively enlarge our know-how with lots of holes that I will expand a little bit in a little while. The advantage of this is that now you become not only a player and a designer, but you become also the one who actually is looking to the future and contributes to make the future response to the future possible threats. So what, what we have in mind, we do believe that Poland today is exactly in the position where Spain was when, they, when Spain decided to join the Eurofighter. You guys have a very growing economy. It is really impressive what Poland is doing. You have lots of young engineers that have the will and the passion and to, to come out. You have an industry which can have an enormous potential. And the idea is, well, Poland should definitely start to play or to be part of this group of nations which are designing the aerospace and defense sector. So the proposal of Eurofighter that we brought on the table is about having Poland joining the program, become a partner on the program. And this is not by chance, because as you probably aware, Eurofighter Consortium together with NEMA decided just very recently to go into what we call LTE, long-term evolution. And the long-term evolution is about start to insert the new digitalization, the new technologies that are foreseen for the coming years into the Eurofighter. So Eurofighter, because platform-wise is very performing, definitely is going to be the bench test of the future technology. And the advantage of this is going to be a very long bridge because we already decide that Europe is going to develop a sixth generation fighter. Doesn't matter whether this is going to call future combat aerial system or Tempest. Italy has decided to join the Tempest. And we definitely believe that Tempest is really the connecting points through the Eurofighter between now and what is sixth generation. Um, and this is a unique opportunity because by the offer that we're put on the table is about the Eurofighter, join the Eurofighter program, which, by the way, can grant that at least at least 50% of the of one slot will stay in Poland, of any slot that is, Poland's going to spend. And this will enable the Polish industry to start to build the capabilities that are going to be needed to connect the sixth generation, therefore the Tempest for us. What it means now, that by joining a program which is a de-risking, uh, let's say, step, because it's, it's not alone, it's not about starting from scratch or blueprints. You're already coming in a very solid program in terms of platform, platform capabilities. You start to work together with us in designing what is going to be the future and then go for that another 50, 25 years. So this is about securing today what is going to be the pace of European aerospace and defense sector for the next 50 years. So it's a unique moment and doesn't happen all the time. So that's why when we offer to Poland the Eurofighter, we are not looking to Poland as a buyer of an asset. We're looking to Poland as a present and future partners, uh, future partner. And, and I believe this is an important uh, differentiator because not only Poland would be the player, but will also be the designer together with us. And, and the contribution of, of another nation into this program will make this program even more robust. So it's, it's, it's a pretty much a win-win situation. Could you provide us how are the tangible effect, industrial and economy effect of acquiring Eurofighter by, by partnership countries, by UK, by Italy and what will be effects for Poland in this case? Very nice question. <laughs> um, okay, the Eurofighter program was really uh, a game changer for, for our industries. We, we found today the Eurofighter program provides 100,000 jobs and, and it involves directly 400 suppliers. Um, but you see, the real advantage of it are the spin off that around the Eurofighter because it motivates a lot our industry to go into the research and development scope uh, aggressively enough to make the difference. Um, because it was difficult. Um, 
Kennedy when the uh, the moon race started. He says, we are not going to the moon because it's the moon. We're going to the moon because it's difficult. At that time, uh, dozens of thousands of copyrights came out from the Apollo missions. And I'm talking about above 50,000 copyrights. The technology that was absorbed because of that very, very challenging mission, it turned out to be an, an enormous spin-off. Uh, there were several analyses that have been made around the Eurofire program, uh, done by the universities in the United Kingdom, done by universities in Germany and by universities in Italy. Uh, there is now a firm and fixed value that we have in mind, uh, which is uh, basically, it turns out to be 4.6, the multiplier of any single euro that have been spent into this program. Uh, and we do believe that this is the same uh, uh, achievable target in Poland. In other words, by spending one slot in Eurofight, you can create three slots in the economy. Because it's difficult. And the nice part of it is that in the past, we were really starting from scratch. Oh, well, sure, we had the experience of tornado. It was much easier for us to step into the Eurofight, even though it was a totally different bird. But now, because we are going into the heavy digitalization, heavy, heavy digitalization, is now about developing computing capabilities, which, of course, can go across many other different industries, car industries, uh, phone industries, computer itself, lots of other applications. Now, but the core of it is the competences that you are generating. And the competences not only are an enormous spin-off for your industries, but those competences are all, almost uh, are definitely an enormous added value for your operations, for your military operations. And I want to give you an example. In, in the future, the battlefield is going to be pretty much about data gathering. You need to know what is out there. And the reason is obvious. How fast our technology is moving with the digital world? Do you remember your mobile phone in 2000? <laughs> yes. Yes, no. And today we have mobile phones, you know, like 19 years later, that those are like astronauts, right? That those are like spaceships. It's all about computing capabilities. It's all about what you put inside the aircraft, inside the platform. As you know, we, we, are, quite, we are quite confident that physical stat has been overpassed by digital stuff for the simple reason now there are all... all lots of sort of other solutions to make yourself invisible or undetectable or too much detectable by the way this when i mean too much detectable means that the concept of stealth you are invisible means they cannot see you but you have the same effect if they see too much instead of seeing the the truck of a euro fighter they save multiple trucks up to the point that are overwhelmed they don't they don't even know what is around there anymore so this is where digitalization is going. The capability of the industry to grab this capability and be the owner of it will make the difference. Now, again, that is all about. So what I need to have, I, I need to have an open source and open mechanism and have partners with whom I can share this sort of capabilities so that I really protect my sovereignty. The weapon system that I'm going to acquire has to be mined by all means. By, by being mine means I know exactly what I want to do with that weapon system. I need to know where I want to go. And in order to be free to move around all the ser series of threats that I have around, I have to know the maximum extent knowledge of what is around. And this can only be achieved by a, a very sophisticated architecture that are capable to listen, identify, and be inserted into my weapon system through the data library. Now, the Eurofighter program has been designed to have this sort of data library capability to be updated in terms of hours, not in terms of weeks or months or years. And each of the nations that are going to be part of this team has to contribute to the data gathering and share those data. Because again, we don't have to forget that political agenda or geopolitical agenda of Poland is the geopolitical agenda of Europe, by all means. We are neighbor guys. So, the Eurofighter LTE, long-term evolution, is going to be, for Poland, the enabler of assessing to this technology, 
use this technology and evolve these technologies. The Tempest is already the verification point. We already have another appointment. We are preparing for, let's say, a very important um, top-class football match. But in the meantime, we know that from here and up in front of us for the next 20, we're about to go into the Champions League. And we need to prepare to be in the Champions League. But we already know that there is the possibility, actually, it's 100% sure, that if I start to work into the Ivy League now, in 10 to 15 years' time, I'll be playing in the Champions League. And I believe that it's time that Poland decides to play into the top class uh, club and be ready to go into the Champions League together with us. So those are really the technological advantages that we believe are on the table today. And I think that Poland definitely should be a player in this, in this, uh, in this vision. Okay. Thank you very much for your words. Thank you.